So the next thing is S mime. S mime is secure multi purpose internet mail extension. So mime is multi purpose internet mail extension. So first email. Email was designed, one of the first applications to be designed for the internet back in 70s was mail, second was file transfer, third was telnet. Three applications, right? How do you send mail to everybody? How do you send, uh, how do you log into log remote computer? And then uh, how do you, what was it, telnet, login, and how do you transfer files, FTP? So the mail was very simple. You just send the text and that's it. They never thought of that we will be ever mailing photographs or that we will ever be mailing computer code binary. So the mail system, original mail program was not designed, was designed to send only text. And so as soon as something non-text started appearing and the web took off, they have to invent something called MIME. MIME is multi-purpose internet mail extension. Basically, this will allow you to send anything you want. Right? And then that was basically when the security became important. Now, this is between 70 and 89. Up till 89, there was no security on the internet. So once the security, first RF3 security was issued in 1989. So once the security became important, and the, the internet started getting used in, in businesses, then, then they had to invent S mine. S mine is secure mine. All right, so the original mail RFC is 822. That allows only text. Now the mine allows you any kind of things, and you could have, you could send a five part message. First part is the text, second part is the picture, third part is a voice, and fourth part is a video. So you have multi-part. Each part basically um, has um, coding, which we'll discuss in a minute. But Secure Mind added four more things. Secure Mind said that um, if I have security enhancement, then whether it is envelope data, envelope data means encrypted content and the keys. So if I'm encrypted, then it is that kind. Signed data, which means that the message signed, but it is not encrypted. Clear signed data is basically clear text with signed signature enclosed. Sorry, signed data means encrypted, sorry. Signed data means encrypted. Clear signed data means not encrypted. And signed and enveloped data, nesting of signed and encrypted entities, one inside the other. And this is in parallel, this is in series. So there are these different kinds of um, <coughs> data. And um, now it is supported in many mail agents, such as today whatever you use, like Outlook or whatever, generally they use as MIME. That's a IETF standard. So MIME itself <coughs> is, when you send a message, it is encoded like this. It says MIME version, content type, multi-part, mixed, boundary, frontier. This is a message with multi-part in MIME format, then frontier beginning and then content type, that front content type is text plain, plain text, and this is body of the message, content type, and so on and so forth. So it basically, this is, this is nothing to do with the security, but if you want to send a mail, this is how it goes. If you were to look at the mail on the wire, so to say, right? If you were using one of these um, um, tools that let you see things on the wire, Wireshark or some other tools, then it, this is what you will find on the wire, a normal mail. And um, so basically I will tell content type. For example, this one says content type application octet stream. This means it is a binary code, executable kind of thing. It doesn't say executable, it says binary code. You can see that it is encoded in some letters, which is clearly it says up lowercase, uppercase, some numbers, and so on and so forth, right? They don't use the Redux 64. They use something called coded printable. That's another coding. If you want to know more about it, you go to Wikipedia. It explains coded printable. Okay, this is not described in the book, by the way. But coded printable, coded printable is that you just use um, 
Okay, MIME allows you many coding. MIME allows 7 bit, 8 bit, binary, coded, printable, base 64. So these are all different codings. Obviously, it doesn't allow binary. Um, 7 bit, 8 bit, coded, printable, base 64. Um, so I'm a little bit confused about how can you draw binary. But let's say coded printable is the example here. It says um, base 64. Sorry, this example is base 64. <coughs> and I can see that base 64 and coded printable, prints, uh, printable, but I don't know how it will allow binary and 8 bit. But I think you have to convert that into 7 bit at most. But anyway, coded printable is where you can put the alphabet as they are, alphanumerics as they are. So uppercase A translates to uppercase A, lowercase A translates to lowercase A. Anything that prints translates to that letter. Sorry, not anything that means, sorry, alphanumerics. And non-alphanumerics, which means basically 652 plus 10, 62 is alphanumeric, right? Those you have to put by equal to sign followed by two hex digits. So if you write equal to 09, that means a tab. Equal to 20 in hex. By the way, 20 in hex is 32 in decimal. And that is space. 3D for equal to sign itself. If you want to put equal to sign, you put equal to 3D. Many of you have saved the web pages in MHT. Anybody has heard of MHT, MSTL? MHTML, MHT, HTML, MHTML, right? So that is like mine encoded HTML. Um, and if you read, if you open an MST document, this is what you will find. It's all ASCII. You can read it, but it has a lot of equal to signs. So, so much about how the formatting is done. But now, again, just like PGP, S mime has selected certain algorithms for um, uh, signatures, DSS and RSA, for hash functions, SHA-1 and MD-5, for session key encryption, Algamal and RSA, for message encryption, AES, triple dash, RSE, Porti, and others, for MAC, SMAC with SHA-1. And um, basically, there is an algorithm to decide which algorithm to use for the process. So basically, you have to decide which algorithm to use. So Outlook or something like that, which they will just do it for you. S mime secures a mime entity with signature encryption or both, and the and the forming a mime wrapped PKCS object. What is PKCS? PKCS is a public key cryptography standard. Now, the now the, the 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 word standard here is is questionable because this is all designed by RSA. So this is a company standard, not a public standard. It's not that multiple companies sat down and they said, let's design a standard. RSA sat down and said, this is what we will use. OK? So there are many standards, which we did not talk in this course, called PKCS, and PKCS number 1, PKCS number 2, PKCS number 7, and I know up to 11 or 12. So this is PKCS number 7. Now PKCS has become a standard because it says it's adopted by IETF. So PKCS was probably protected by some kind of um, patent. And so it was a standard or patented a standard, which means if you have used it, you have to pay money to RSA. Just like the RSA encryption was patented before, but now patent has expired on all of these. So all of these, including RSA, have become public domain. So PKCS 7. In fact, when you got the certificate, and if you were using uh, Google Mail, Gmail, it was it had some file which was PKCS 7 dot something, right? That file because it was encoded in this format. Signed data, envelope data, degenerate signed data, compressed data, and signed data. This is the meaning of these. This is the subtype. So in that message, you will have content type, application, PKCS 7 mine, S mine type signed data. Name is equal to smime.p7m. Encoding base 64. And disposition, content disposition attachment, file name is equal to p7m. So I don't know what content disposition is. Maybe this simply says this is an attachment to the mail, main mail. 
but the key point that I want to explain in this slide is that this is encoded with that and it is a signed data and signed data means it's a clear message with signature signed entity so this is clear message with signature envelope data would have meant if you have to put here envelope data that would mean encrypted and so on another interesting one is degenerate signed data means certificate by the way some lines are missing here horizontal line so certificates so it uses 509 certificates that's what you have and um, and uh, using a hybrid of a strict um, uh, certificate authority are enterprise CS. So what happens is you work for a company, let's say you work for IBM, they don't want to go to RSA for every certificate and pay them five bucks or 20 bucks or 30 bucks. They can issue their own certificates inside the company. Right? Okay. Uh, what does it take? Nothing, a computer to calculate the private key and public key. So, so that's what it says here, is that the certificate could be issued by the enterprise. Each client has a listed list of trusted CAs and his own certificates, just like you have, and several types of certificates with different levels of checks. So class one is for email and web browsing, two for intercompany mail, three for banking, and so on and so forth. Because you don't want to use a very poor certificate for banking. Right? That means a longer key or whatever it is, and a stronger and not only longer key, it also a stronger authentication. Before you get a key for banking, you really have to go with your own driver's license to some office. Email certificate that you got in the mail, they didn't check anything actually. All they checked was that, yeah, you have that email because they sent it to that email, right? But anybody can get any certificate for any email as long as they have the email, right? I mean, so the thing is, that's all it certifies. It doesn't certify that you are Raj Jain or you are anything else. It just says that you have the email Jain at csc.gostal.edu. Okay? So there are different levels of authentication. Enhanced security services. Um, so um, basically you can do a few more things. And if you go into Outlook, you can probably get a signed receipt. You can get a priority. And you can get, uh, now the thing is how do you do secure mailing list? Basically the group broadcast is that somebody has sit down and s separate key for everybody else and then send them the key and so on and so forth. So that can be done. All right, this is much about S-Mine. Any question about S-Mine before we go to Deakin? I think the new thing in S-Mine was simply, let's see, what was new? Um, I think everything was standard. The only thing you learn is PKCS that we didn't use before. But other than that, everything is standard. We just learned basically Redix 64, Base 64, and code principle, code principle. All right, final thing is domain key identified mail. So now what has started happening was that if you send an email, and it can be rejected by certain receivers saying that, no, we know that this domain has a lot of spam, generating spam. For example, if you ever send a mail, and I've done this, to Boeing, to Boeing, using AT&T DSL, it will be rejected because AT&T DSL has produced a lot of spam. Right? <laughs> what do I do? I'm an AT&T DSL. Can't talk to Boeing. And so, so that was a false alarm because not everybody on AT&T DSL, they, they, they forgot that AT&T DSL is not like, you know, I mean, some small thing, you know, I mean, so on and so forth. It was becoming difficult to enforce them. Um, so the basically, just based upon the domain, many of the companies will reject email from that domain. And they used to have a list on the net. So if they receive a lot of, lot of spam from, let's say, a company email address called x.y, whatever it is, right, x.com, then that list will go there and it will be on that list, you will be on that list. And then every company will check that list and say, oh, we are not going to let your mail go through because you are from a spam list. Just by domain name. People said, hold on, that cannot be correct. Because first of all, anybody can make up any domain name. Anybody can put anything in the from address. So, I mean, if it is, let's say x.com or bushtal.edu is on the list, but anybody can put bushtal.edu on their email. So they said, okay, everything that Bushtel will send will sign it. Bushtel will sign it. The user doesn't have to sign it. Bushtel will sign it. So now, when you get a domain key identified mail, 
detailed mail that is signed by the company, then you can be assured that this came from Worcester. Now you can do whatever you want to do with it. You want to throw it away, that's your choice, but at least you know it came from Worcester. Right? So does it make sense what is domain identified mail? Domain identified mail is the domain signs it. The user doesn't know, this is totally transparent to user. When you send an e email from here, it is quite possible that Booster signs every email. And then the people who want to care, who care about it, read it, who don't care about it, they don't read the signature, they throw away the signature. All right, so this is how it works. You, you sign it, this is the mail user agent, and you s just use a normal SMTP to send it to your mail, a mail service agent, MSA, and it is, it goes um, like that. But what we did here was that we put, we signed it right here, sign up. And anybody can get my public key, Booster's public key, by going to DNS and saying, what is Booster's public key? Right? And hopefully that is correct, because DNS can be played with. So hopefully you get the right key from DNS, then you can verify that yeah, the signature is correct, so this is from that, and therefore I don't have to put in the junk mail, I can give it to the user. So now the summary is that DKIM identified mail, or uh, DKIM, spammers cannot use your address. A spammer do use our addresses. For example, I get lots of emails that says that your email was rejected, and I never send that email. Right, because somebody else used it, that address, right? So maybe if people had DKIM, then at least that part will be taken care of. Now the rest of it is detailed, actually all this is same thing said in five different ways. So let's see what they're saying here is that originating I am internet, let's see that easy. Yeah, this is exactly the same thing. It is just saying that if you start with your public key, verify the signature, and if it passes, then you decide what to do with this. If it fails, then um, then you decide what to do with it, basically, kind of thing, you know. So now you have one more thing which is assigned uh, by that, okay? That's all there is, so summary. So the summary of this chapter, 18, five key summary points. Email can be signed, encrypted, or both. There. Actually, these are two methods, PGP and S-Mine. S-Mine is what we use in Outlook and uh, most other programs. PGP is one of the older ones. And um, then we start DKIM, which is totally transparent to the user. So you don't even know that your company is using DKIM. And PGP is a commonly used system that provides integrity, authentication, privacy, compression, segmentation, and mine compatibility. So basically, if you download PGP, you can just get everything done, and it is compatible with all the systems because of mine. And then PGP invented this web of trust. So you don't really need to go to a company to pay, get the certificate, and the web address has now disappeared mostly. Fourth point was that the S mine extends for mine for secure mail, and then does exactly the same thing, authentication and privacy. And the fifth point is DKIM. DKIM allows companies to sign the emails. And all it proves is that it came from this company, and we don't know anything about these other things. It doesn't even check whether the email is correct. So if I send an email from Wustel uh, and uh, and sign it as Jain at CSE, it doesn't check that it came from Jain at CSE. It is not guaranteeing that at all. It is just saying that it is coming from Wustel, period. Somebody at Wustel sent it. Okay, homework. First 16 bit of the message in a digest are transmitted in clear. To what extent does this compromise the security of the hash algorithm? and encode the text, plain text, using Reddit 64 and quoted printable. Okay, the second one is easy. And if nothing else, you can go to Wikipedia and get help. Um, the first one is just basically think about as to why they put that in the clear and would that, how much that reduces the, reduces the security of the hash. Hash is 160 bit there. Does it make it 159, 161? What does it do?